Hi there. My name is Amy Schultz, and I'm a speech language pathologist, or an SLP for short. And as an SLP, I have children who are struggling to communicate. My favorite way to do that is during play-based activities. That means that children come into my treatment room, and then they can play with toys and games, and we'll work on their goals during those activities. And that does several things. It helps keep them motivated, it helps keep them participating, and most importantly, it helps with generalization. That means that those children are able to take those new skills and use them in their everyday lives, whether they're talking to their teacher in the classroom, or they're talking to their parents at the dinner table, or they're playing with their friends. Some of the many skills that I work on with children is articulation and phonology, and that's the fancy SLP way of saying we work on pronunciation and enunciation. We work on saying our speech sounds correctly. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm using the app Toko Life World to work on articulation and phonology. And now I think you can tell that this week is actually Halloween week um, in my world. Uh, as I'm recording this, that gives you an idea of just how long it sometimes take me, takes me to take these videos, record them, put them together, and then get them online um, during my busy schedule. I usually uh, find time in my uh, busy schedule when I have cancellations <laughs> to work on these videos. Um, so with all that being said, um, let's switch over to my iPad view so you can see what I'm talking about while I'm talking about it. Now during this loading screen, you can always touch it and that'll actually skip past it. I like to leave it on my videos, my tutorials, so that those of you who aren't familiar with it will know that as it's going along, this is normal. And now it'll load into our home screen um, and we have our green button on the left for the store, the blue on the right that we're gonna press to play. And once it loads up here, you will be able to see all the different add-ons that I have bought in for this game. Um, every single one of these buildings here are all add-ons that I have added to the game. Some of them were 99 cents, some of them were 3.99. But here is the part, um, all these buildings here are free. And then these are the buildings that you can build. And this is where I usually work on um, articulation. In this house here, I have set it up so that um, there are different targets in different rooms. So first when it loads, here is, let's see, let's switch over here. Here's the outside. And these are where I have all of the items for G's and K's. So like cactus, I have the cactus there. And in this box, I have a hamburger and a guitar. Um, and then I have the ghost cat, which has both the G and the K. It's the ultimate um, target for kid as we're working on that. Um, let's switch over to this room here. This is the room where I have all of my multisyllabic words like xylophone and umbrella for kids working R and L. That one's really hard. Binoculars. Um, this room, let's see, I have all these doors here. I have vacuum. Our V's are here. Vacuum. I have the S's here. Salt. I have the um, S blends here. I have a skeleton wearing slime with a star on a swing. <laughs> Over here, here's my ch, my ch sound, my sh sound, and my j sound. So we have drink over here for this one too. Um, in this room here, I have all my TH sounds. Um, so this allows children to tell me what to do with the TH sounds. Do they want me to put the sloth in the bathtub, put the third place hat on the sloth, make the sloth do math, put the birthday hat on the earth, etc. Um, I can even change their clothes so they can tell me to put the sweater on the sloth, all that good stuff. Over here um, is where I'll do most of my video. So here are my L blends like flag, and here are my L words like bubble, um, and if you touch it, it actually does blow bubbles. Um, and then here I have my R's, and I have R in four different suitcases in all of its to its different positions. So I have a word initial here like rat, word final like bear, word medial like horse, and blends like brush. And I'm just going to show you how I use um, the word initial here. So some of these items that are in here are items that I've gathered from the world. I gathered the rat from the mall. I got the robot from the trumpet junkyard, the ruler from the school. The robe is a gift that comes at to the post office and the recipe is from the haunted mansion that we will go to next. These other items are all ones that I got from this um, little kind of shop here. So once you buy an add on, things are added to the shop and you can take as many of them out as you want to. So here you see I have rabbits and down here I have a ring 
and further down is the oops I did not mean to put that in there let's just throw that away and then here is the rose and I took that apart just so it's fewer items um, and then a oh, one more over here that is the race video game so that one all those are from here as well as the rice which is down here at the bottom right there okay so when I'm working on articulation and phonology skills I will usually start I will always start with minimal pair cards that we will do before we do any work in Toko life world but those can get quite boring for children so what I'll do when um, we move to this level is I will take the Toka version of me and the Toka version of the child. This one's um, not a real child, but her, I'm calling her Emma, and we're going to use Emma as an example. And when I'm first working on these words, I'll have the children you say them in imitation. So I'll say them first, they'll say them after me. So I'll pick up an item from out of the suitcase or the shelf and say rice, and I'll see if they can say it back. If they need more help, we might do prolongation rice me that are nice and long or we'll do phoneme segmentation where we're doing er ice but to start they're saying these words after I'm saying them once they're able to do that on their own I'll start putting these in the character's hands and ask her you know what do you have what is in your hand and see if she can say rabbit what is in my hand see if she can say rose once that's mastered I will start just putting things around and say what's happening so that she can say oh you have the racing game or I have the ring um, and then at the mastery level, when we're getting close to doing um, conversation, I will pull the things out and just ask her to tell me what to do with these. And she might say, you know, put the robe on, which I could do that, or um, put the recipe away, or put the rat on the windowsill, or put the robot on the shelf. So that'll give us um, sentences that are, are um, more self-generated, which is a higher level. So that gives you an idea of how I'm doing them there. Once children master all that, I will start working on articulation and phonology in different parts of the world. And since this week is Halloween week, I'm working on them in at the Haunted Mansion right here. So let's see where this loads inside the house. So we're going to scroll all the way to the right. Here's the gates. I'll put this kiddo away, pull out me and Emma and we will start walking towards the haunted mansion and as we're walking up the path oh look what is this here oh look what is that it's flying i might just have it fly around so i can hear her say the crow is flying or the crow is attacking us um if i can find a place to put the crow <laughs> up on a branch let's see here there we go and i can ask oh what happened to the crow and she could say it's on the branch um, or I could say, oh, look, is this candy? And she could say, it's a mushroom. So then it's even more spontaneously generated as we're moving along. And I might ask her here, okay, well, we're, we're trick-or-treating. We're at the door. What do we do? And hopefully she'll say, ring the bell. We'll have um, the door open and ask, what do we do next? And hopefully she'll say, say, trick or treat. And we'll get those blends nice and strong. And then we'll have him give us some candy. And then I'll tell her, you know, we shouldn't go into the house of somebody when we're actually trick-or-treating. But for this game, we're going to go into the house and explore. Let's see what we can find. Oh, look, is this, do you think it's a toy? And hopefully she'll be able to say it's a recipe. <laughs> we might have to do it more than once so that she knows what a recipe is. And then she can say it spontaneously. And then let's try the recipe. Let's see, we need this rotted tomato and a potato. And, oh, she ate it. Oh, do you think that was delicious? And hopefully they'll say something about it being gross. And then, you know, what did she do to help her feel better? They could say she drank some milk. Um, and as we're coming along, oh, look, this is interesting. There's some pictures over here. Hmm, I wonder what that's all about. And usually they'll notice the statues right there. But we'll keep moving on for just for now, just to see everything else. Um, and I'll just start picking things up off the, the shelves and point out, look, is this a TV? And hopefully they'll say, oh, no, it's a radio. And then I'll ask, oh, what is this over here? Is it um, Kleenex? And hopefully they'll say it's toilet paper. And then let's see what else we could do here. Um, we could pick up this here and I could say, oh, what is this? Is this uh, makeup? And hopefully they'll say it's perfume. They might, again, I mean, they might need to do this more than once so that they have the words so that before they can spontaneously generate them. And then I'll ask who was hiding, who was sleeping? It was an eyeball. And oh, what is this on the wall? It's, it's a picture of flowers and look here was a frog that was sleeping there's so many r words just all around um and then if i show them the button hopefully they will tell me to press it 
They might say push, which is fine. We'll find more R words. And once we get in here, I'll go, oh, look, what is this? Is it a bat? No, it's a spider, right? Nice word final one there. Um, and then I pull this out and look, it looks like a hint. It's a clue. Okay, I'm going to grab us. I'm going to give us the clue and, you know, we should go upstairs. I can't find any stairs though. Where, how are we going to get up there? And hopefully they'll tell me to take the elevator. <laughs> so let's head on up to level two. And I'm going to go ahead and edit out the loading screen. So here we are upstairs. Um, and let's look around and see. Oh, look at these lights here. They're not pink, are they? And hopefully the kids will say they're purple. And then I'll look around and see if there's anything else we can use. Uh, hopefully they'll tell me to look into the treasure chest. And we'll find another picture. And then I'll bring it over here and I wonder where this goes. And oh, look, it seems to fit right here and the candle lit up. What should we do? Maybe we should put, see where does this one go on the left? How about where does this one go? Oh, on the right. One, another one for the middle, another one for the middle, and oh, what's that? It's a lever. Let's see what happens when we pull it up. What is this? Was it a hidden table? No, it was a hidden room. And now it looks like I left my um, room in here, which would be another one. Um, and I usually try to err on the side of giving children examples of the wrong word. Um, otherwise, if I say, you know, what did I leave? They'll just say broom and it won't be an actual utterance. It'll be a single word. So I'll say things like, oh, it looks like I left my hat when it's not my hat. Now to find the next clue, I'll give them hints so they will say under the table. Here's the next clue. And look, there's also a mummy dog. So cute. Okay, so now that we got the two clues and we see where these are supposed to go. <gasps> look, it opened another button. Hopefully they can tell me to press that button too. And the alarm is now going off and there's lightning or electricity and the whole room is shaking and then it opens up this part on the top here and there's something inside let's see what it is it looks like ah, a slime monster that's another good one with that r and you can see if i put the um, items in my hands with the slime monster on my face they turn into slime anything i put my hands is going to turn into slime now um, and that is okay because uh, it's readily fixable. I'm going to put this on Emma over here so she can be a slime monster. And then you just touch the ones that were turned into slime and they just turn back into what they were. So that hopefully gives you some ideas for how I'm using Toka Life World to work on articulation phonology. Thanks for watching.